JIRA Basics, Module 7, Searching for Issues. In this module, the last in our seven module course, we're going to be exploring the issue searching capabilities available in JIRA. In the previous modules, we looked at installation, concepts of projects, labels, workflows, versions, and components. And we've also covered dashboards and filters in the last module. All we have left now is searching for issues, possibly the part of JIRA you'll use the most frequently. Our learning objectives for this module then, firstly, understand how to search for issues. Secondly, using the predefined filters in JIRA. Thirdly, using the basic filter capabilities provided by JIRA. And fourthly, using the advanced filter capabilities and the JQL query language that JIRA provides too. Let's start then with the predefined filters that JIRA provides. So for example, when you select your project from the projects dropdown, you'll see a view that lists some of the issues in the project. And this view is actually a predefined filter that you can select from this dropdown at the top left here. And by default, it selects open all issues. You could select my open issues, in which case you get a predefined filter that lists the issues in your project that are actually assigned to you as the person responsible for working on this particular issue. But as you can see from the drop down, there are a number of predefined filters in here that cover things like issues you viewed recently, issues that have been completed, issues that you opened, and issues that you've resolved, closed, and updated recently. It's also worth pointing out that there is an option down the bottom here to manage these predefined filters too. And we'll touch on that in a section in a minute. Once you've selected a predefined filter, open issues for example, what JIRA is actually doing is applying some predefined filter criteria using the basic filter capability within JIRA. And that basic filter search capability is what we'll look at now. The basic filter and search capability then. From either the issues drop down menu, select search for issues, or from the link over on the right hand side, view all issues and filters, you can bring up the filter criteria that were applied for our predefined filter. And that includes things like the project you want to search for your issues in, the type of issues, so whether they're subtasks, tasks, defects, etc., and the status of those issues. So we could select to show only open and in progress issues. Along with that, you'll also find the assignee, so we could look for all issues that are open and in progress and that are assigned to me as the current user. And then there's a free format text box on the right hand side here, which allows us to search for various text strings that are contained within our issues as well. If the filter field that you want to search on isn't visible, so for example, maybe you wanted to search on labels as well, then you can use the more drop down box to select other criteria that you wish to search on. So in this scenario, I have a set of issues that are based on this Paris label, and I could use the labels drop down to look for all issues that are also containing the Paris label. Another additional filter to be aware of then is from the more drop down is the summary filter, and that gives us the ability to search for issues based on this summary text or title text in the issues that we have within our project. And all of this gives you the capability to apply some pretty complex filters, complex filters that will take us quite a long way. However, if you want to go even further, then you can take advantage of JIRA's JQL or JIRA query language search capability that we'll look at next. JQL then, or JIRA query language. 
This is an SQL-like language that allows you to perform various searches on your JIRA data. And for somebody who already has experience with SQL, this approach to searching for your data can be a lot quicker and allow you to implement more complex search criteria. If you want to get started with JQL, the simplest way is to click on the advanced link next to your basic search criteria, and JIRA automatically turns that into a JQL query. And you can see from our previous basic search, this has been turned into a search where we're looking for a project which has a code AAS, where the issues are in a status of open or in progress, and the resolution is unresolved, and labels Paris, and the assignee is the current user. And you can flip between basic and advanced just by using this link. And from here, we could modify this query. For example, we could say project equals AAS or project equals ADS and a status in open, in progress, and resolution unresolved, and labels equals Paris, etc. And if we search based on that, we'll find issues across multiple projects, if there are any. As you work more with the search criteria, and the basic search capability and flip between basic and advanced mode, you'll become more familiar with this JQL language syntax. But Jira does help you with this when you type a new JQL query in from scratch. So if I search project, it lets me enter equals and then I can select if I want to from a list of the projects in my Jira instance. And if we hit return on that, that search is carried out based on that JQL query. And again, we could add to that with additional criteria and assignee equal or assignee is empty. And again, Jira is prompting me with clues and advice on how to build out that query. And in this instance, there are no Jira issues in this project where the assignee isn't set. So the query I'm showing you here might look slightly complex in the first instance, but if you strip it all back and start from scratch, it's fairly easy to see how you build these sorts of queries up. And Jira does a very good job of prompting you and giving you clues as to how to build these queries. So if we start from scratch, for example, and we type project, and it tells us that we can use equals, and we can specify a project name here, AAS for example, and that gives us the first part of our JQL query. And from here, we can build it up by putting in or or and logic. So we can say and summary, which is another one of our fields, the summary field in the JIRA issues, equals or includes the text new, for example. And we can test that query by pressing enter, and we see that we've got four issues that meet that JQL query criteria. And again, we can build this up as far as we like using the JIRA intelligent syntax help here, and include other things like status equals open. So needless to say, things can get a lot more complicated than this, but starting out with the basic JIRA search capability and flipping between advanced and basic will start to give you a feel and an understanding of how to construct these queries. And honestly, once you start building these queries, it becomes far quicker to type these queries in and save these queries than it does to start using drop downs and check boxes in the basic query capability provided within JIRA. So just quickly before we finish this module on JIRA search, let's have a look at managing our filters and saving our filters. So you may have noticed whilst we're in basic mode or even in advanced mode, that there's a save as button at the top here. And when we click on the save as, we can specify a filter name, uh, so we can do Acme new and open search and save that. And this filter is then saved to our 
custom filters, which can be selected from the drop down, or when we select manage filters, where we can see all of the filters we've created and saved, and execute, update, and manage those filters from within the manage filters area. Obviously, one click from here, and it runs that filter and gives us that list of issues that meet the filter criteria that we specified. You'll notice too that from these filters you can add these to our favorites, which means they get included in the drop down and gives us the capability to access those filters quickly from, from this drop down. So in conclusion then, one of the biggest strengths of Jira is this search and filter capability. As your projects grow and the number of issues increases, your ability to find issues that you need to focus on becomes ever more important. And understanding how to apply and work with these filters becomes absolutely essential. At a minimum, you'll need to be able to find issues that are assigned to you and your team and that are in a to-do state that need you to work on them. And obviously the simplest way to do that is to select from the predefined filters, my open issues. But as we've seen, you can expand on that using the basic filter criteria and the advanced filter criteria, saving those filters into your predefined filter list and accessing them within seconds so that Jira can help you focus on what's important to you in your projects.